it's a little hard to read that, especially on the video, because of the glare. But it says graphing inequalities that go through the origin. So what do I mean by that? If we look at a graph, a coordinate plane, the origin is this point right here. That's called the origin. The coordinates of the origin are 0, 0. Right? So that's what I mean. What if we have a line that goes through that point? Today we're going to talk about how can we graph that as an inequality. It's going to be a little bit tricky. That would be one example. Yeah. Okay. So. Can it be any direction? There's a couple of reasons that this is tricky. One is if we have an equation that's in slope intercept form, y is greater than 3x. Now, the thing to notice, if it goes through the origin, there's not going to be anything else there. It can't have a plus one. Right? So you will know that it goes through the origin because you'll see y on one side, x on the other side, and then nothing after the x. It's not going to say plus one or minus five because then it's not going to go through the origin. So this one goes to the origin. I can tell because it's not plus 1. That means I know my first point is right here, 0. We can imagine a plus 0 here. And so I know that I start at y equals 0. I can still use my slope. In this case, the slope is 3 over 1. So I go up 3 over 1, and then have my line. Now, in this case, it's going to be a solid line because I have greater than or equal to. Here's the tricky part. We always plug in 0, 0 to figure out which side to shade on. But I can't do that now. Why not? How do I figure out which side to shade on? Well, because um, it gets the closest to a different line. Yeah, why? Because zero's right here. Zero's already on the line. So I know that's going to be true. It's not going to tell me which side to shade on. So I have to figure out, and it can be any point. Right? One, one again. Let's say I plug in. Now, on this graph, 1, 1, I think would work, but it's kind of close. You don't want to pick a line that's a point that's close to your line, right? Like I probably wouldn't want to pick a point like uh, five or sorry two five because that, that's like probably on this side of the line, but it's pretty close. So I would recommend picking a point that's pretty clearly negative off the line. Five, so negative five six. Yeah, like something over here. That would be great. But you can also pick one that's easy. So you could pick something like uh, 2, comma 0. It still has 1, 0 in it. So it's going to make it a little bit easier still. It doesn't really matter which point you pick. You can choose any point you want. But make sure you remember where your point is. I'm going to choose 2, 0 because I think that's pretty easy. Which one is the x and which one is the y? Uh, y equals 2. Uh, always alphabetical order, right? So always x, comma, y. Uh -huh. So then when we plug that in, I'm going to write this as what? 0 is greater than or equal to 3 times 2. And then I want to know, is that true? 
Is 0 greater than or equal to 6? False. Yeah. So false means we shade on the opposite side from where that point is. And then you're done. You've graphed it. I mean, when you guys shade on your papers, you can, you don't have to do it as lines like that, right? You can kind of do more of a shading. It's just hard to get the shading of it. I like this one because it sounds professional. So professional. Okay. Whatever you think looks the best. And it's place up. All right, face on this. Let's do one more example like that. So, what if I had y is less than negative two x? I guess I should have erased all of this. Y is less than negative 2x. Okay. So I imagine a plus 0 here. Start there. Then my slope is negative 2 over 1. So I go down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Is this going to be a dotted line or a solid line? I'm going to dot it. Yeah. A dotted line. What would happen if I did plug in zero, zero? Um, would it be like the, the effect of just the shading from that one? If I plugged in zero, zero, right? Zero is less than zero. What happens is I get something with both sides being the same. Which means when both sides are the same, that means it's on my line. So I immediately know, oh, I can't choose that point. If both sides of my inequality are the same, I chose a point that's on the line. So you, you need to like, so whatever number is on the far right, you have to see, no, the, the, the zero, uh, you'd have to like, see if it's greater than or less than zero itself. Usually, that's what we do. Okay, but in this case, we're going to In this case, it has to be different because zero, zero is on my line. So what's a point I could choose here? negative 2, 1. So that would be right here. I could choose that point if I wanted to. Let's do it. So this is the point negative 2, 1, which is my x and which is my y. Alphabetical order. Okay, so plug it in here. Instead of y, I'm going to write 1. It's less than negative 2 times negative 2. So is this true? Is 1 less than a negative times a negative is a positive, positive four. Is this true? Yes. It's true. So I'm going to shade towards Lucas' point that he chose. And then we're done. So it's not too tricky. Now there is a case where it can be even a little bit tricky. Oh wait, so either way you get it right on this one. Yeah, no matter what point you choose, you're going to get it right. I like the zero. It's just true or false, right? Yeah, I like the zero, zero at the end. Fun. <laughs> if it's true, you shade that way. If it's false, you shade the other way. But what if we had something like this? X plus Y is greater than zero. So now we have standard form with x and y on the same side, right? Yeah. So if I wanted to graph this, normally what I would do is I'd cover up my, my uh, x and I'd find what y is, zero. Y. Cover up my y and find what x is, but 
I don't have two points, so I can't make a line that way. So what can I do? How can I figure out where my line is? Sure, you can always do a t-chart. So let's see, if x is 5, what does y have to be to make this thing true? So 5 plus what is going to be 0? Negative. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And down one, two, three, five. So the point right there. There. Oops. Should I have drawn a solid line? No. No. Should have been dashed or dotted. Okay. Okay. Here's my dashed line. So I just used a t-chart to figure out the rest of that line. How did I get the negative 5? Because I know 5 plus negative 5 is 0. Right? So I'm figuring out, OK, 5 plus what? And I have to pretend this is an equals. To do my t-chart, I pretend this is an equals. Okay? 5 plus what is 0. So I subtract 5 from both sides, y equals negative 5. And that's how I get this number. Then I take this point and I plug it in on my graph. And I think I erased it, but it was like right there. Negative 5, negative 5. Yeah? So is there any other way to draw um, the line that Yeah, so there is another trick that you could use if you want to. When you see something like this, you could get y on one side. So in this equation, uh, x plus y is greater than 0, I would do that by subtracting x from both sides. x minus x is 0, so I have y over here is greater than, this would be negative x. And then I could graph this as if it were slope-intercept form, because now I have y on one. So if you'd rather do it this way, totally fine to do it this way. I think it's easier to do it this way. Yeah, I think some people think the t-chart is easier. Some people probably think slope-intercept form is easier. But we're going to do a couple more examples of that in a second. So, so you can uh, practice. All right, now it's the same thing as before. It goes to 0, 0, so I have to figure out a different point. What point might I choose? to test which way to shade. Six. Six what? Do we always do the y or the x? Y. A point has to have two coordinates. Six is not a point on the graph. So it's six comma two. So where would that be, Luca? So you'd go over one, two, three, four, five, six, uh -huh. and then you'd go up to one, two. So I could plug in that point and see if it's true. So here's my equation. Is 6 plus 2 greater than 0? Yeah, that's true. So I shade towards that point, which is just half of it. Right? I always know I'm either going to shade this way, or I'm going to shade this way. And in this case, I shade towards 6. Let's do a couple more like this. Can I erase this? Yeah. Let's say I had um, 5x plus So what can I do?
on that line. Because when x is 0, y is 0. Oh, and then you're going to go um, so, over 5. Now I can't figure out, using our trick, how to make a line. So I have to go back to doing a feature. Why can't I use this 5, Lisa? Because Why can't I use it? it's um, less but than 0. The x is on the same side as y. Yeah. So that's why I can't do that. If I wanted to use the slope, I would have to get y alone. So I could subtract 5x from both sides. And I would have y is less than 5x. And then I could do my graph by using that as my slope. If I wanted to do it. So this is saying my slope is negative 5 over 1. Go down 5 and over 1. And there, I have my graph if I want to do it that way. But what I'm graphing is this form. Okay. Because if you notice, in this form, I would have gone up 5 if I had been thinking about the slope. And that would have been incorrect. Do you see why that is? Okay. So I could graph it this way, or we could always do a t-chart. So let's say if I made x1, what would y have to be? Well, 5 times 1 plus y would have to equal 0. So 5 plus y would equal 0. Subtract 5 from both sides. And I'm going up 5. 5 minus 5 is 0, so y will equal. So a teacher, we get the same point, actually, if we do that in this case. 1, negative 5. So it, it's the same line. It's just two different tricks to graph. Super steep line. Is it going to be dotted or solid? Uh, it's going to be dotted because it's not a greater than or equal to. No equal to, so I make a dotted line. Now, who can give me a point that I can plug in to figure out which way to shape? Five, two. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, two. So this point right here. Plug it into this one. So five times five plus two is less than zero. Twenty-five plus two is less than zero. Is that true? Yeah, no way. 27 is definitely not less than 0. So I'm going to shade away from that point. Maybe if it was real. Right. And I'm done. Let's turn this off.